Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design an animated kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. So let's start. Before we jump into animating kinetic typography in After Effects, we need to take care of a few preliminary steps. First, download the 10 pixel font from Behance. I'll also include the link in the video description. Once the font is downloaded and installed, open Adobe Illustrator. In Illustrator, create a new document with a standard size of 1080 by 1080 pixels and set the color mode to RGB. Hit OK. Next, select the Type tool from the toolbar and write out some text and choose the 10 pixel font we just installed. Now, let's adjust the kerning and size. After that, right click on the text, choose Create Outlines and then right click again to ungroup the shapes. Do another right click to select Release Compound Path this step will allow us to move each shape individually, which is what we need. Select all the shapes that form your graphic, and in the Layers tab, click the hamburger menu and choose Release to Layers Sequence. This will distribute each shape to its own layer, in the same order they appeared initially. Great! Now, select all of our new layers and move them outside of Layer 1. Once empty, delete Layer 1. The final step is to save your file and import it into After Effects. Alright, let's jump into Adobe After Effects and import our Illustrator file. Select Import as Composition, retain layer sizes when you import and hit Open. This conveniently sets up a new composition where each layer of the Illustrator file retains its original size. Next, let's tweak our composition settings to ensure everything is perfect for our project. Navigate to the top menu, choose Composition and then Composition Settings. Here, you can confirm the size, frame rate and duration. We are going with 1080 by 1080, 30 frames per second, and a 10 second duration. Once you're happy with the settings, click OK to save them. Now let's add a new solid layer as our background. Make it white, then shuffle this layer beneath all the others in your project to keep the main shapes visible. This sets the stage nicely. Next, we'll introduce a null object, which we'll name Hover Control. This null object is not just any object, it's the command center for our animation effects. It will sit above all the other layers, orchestrating their movements. This is where the real fun begins. For our hover control to control, we'll need to add some sliders. With the null selected, head over to the Effects panel, choose Expression Controls and add a slider control. Duplicate this slider twice, giving us three in total. We'll name them Hover Scale Factor, Pace Scale Factor and Field Size. These sliders are key to controlling how dynamic our animation will be affecting how the layers respond as they interact with the hover control. The hover scale factor adjusts the maximum scale our layer reaches when closest to the hover control. It's crucial to define how intense the interaction will be. Pace scale factor sets the starting scale, essentially how the layer appears outside the hover effects range. Field size controls the radius of our effect, determining how far from the hover control the hover effect influences the layers. With our controls in place, let's start connecting them to our layers. Select a layer, Hit S to open the scale property, then Alt click the stopwatch to open the expression editor. Here's where we script the magic. So, we start by grabbing the layer that will control everything. We call it hover control. I'll write this line here to make sure we're all set. Hover layer equals sign, and using the pick whip tool, select our hover control null and semicolon. Now let's create three variables one for each slider we have in our control null. So let's do it. Hover scale factor equals hover scale factor slider, then another variable for base scale factor equals base scale factor slider, field size equals field size slider. Next up, we need to determine how far our layer is from the hover control. This is key because the distance decides how much we scale. Here's how we measure it distance equals length, open parenthesis position, comma, hover layer, period, position, close parenthesis, semicolon. All right, now for the fun part. We must decide how much to scale our layer based on its proximity to the hover control. If it's within the field size, we will adjust the scale. If open parenthesis distance less than field size, close parenthesis, open brace, scale factor equals base scale factor plus open parenthesis, hover scale factor minus base scale factor, close parenthesis times open parenthesis, one minus distance divided by field size, close parenthesis semicolon close brace, else open brace scale factor equals base scale factor semicolon close brace. Finally, we apply the scale factor we've just calculated to the width and height of our layer 
to keep everything proportional. It's just one line of code, open bracket scale factor, comma scale factor, close bracket semicolon. As you can see, after entering our expressions, our layer vanishes because our sliders are initially at zero. Let's style in some values. Set hover scale factor to 200 for maximum impact, base scale factor to 100 for normal state, and field size to 250 to cover our desired area. Then drag the hover control across the layer to witness the immediate effect of our expressions and sliders. Next, let's mark a keyframe on the scale property and press Ctrl or Command C to make a copy and let's paste it in all the other layers, applying this expression in all of them. And click on the Collapse checkbox to enable continuous rasterization, making our layers looking crisp. Finally, let's animate this setup using the Motion Sketch tool. This tool enables you to hand draw movement paths that After Effects translates into position keyframes. To use it, go to the Window menu, select Motion Sketch, and start capturing your movement. There you have it. Once animated, you can see the dynamic effects as the hover control moves, creating visually engaging interactions with the affected layers. The last thing to do is create an adjustment layer and apply an invert effect to invert the colors. And that's it. And I'm also working on a script that automates this setup. So keep an eye out for future updates. Anyway, it's ready to render and publish. And that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to like and subscribe and check my other kinetic type tutorials. I'm sure you're going to have great fun there. And if you want and can support this channel, you can buy me a coffee on my Buy Me A Coffee page or become a member and get access to this tutorial working file and many others working files and scripts in my page. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, a great life, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>